Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm so excited to be talking to some of the incredible artisans working on the series Hacks. We are joined today by director of photography, Adam Bricker, production designer, Rob Tokars, costume designer, Kathleen Felix Hager, Keith Sayer, who's Jean Smart's makeup artist, Jennifer Bell, who's Jean Smart's hairstylist, and John W. Cook II, who is in charge of all the sound mixing on the series. And Adam, coming over to you first and talking about the cinematography in the series, I wanted to talk in particular about the opening in uh, in season three, episode one, where you have that really amazing one shot coming together, because I love the way that it ties back to the very beginning of episode one, season one, where we had that shot of Jean coming into the show and kind of introducing us to her world, um, because it sounds like this was an incredibly intricate shot to put together using drones and obviously having to rehearse it. There's so many background artists who are in that shot as well. And so I was just very interested in all of the intricacies that went into putting that together for you and your team and the way in which you wanted to pay homage to the beginning of the show. Yeah, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having all of us here. It's so exciting to see everyone and to talk about talk about this season. Um, yeah, that was you know a fabulous a fabulous way to to start to start the season. And I was uh, both excited and a little intimidated when I read it in the in the first script when that hit the inbox. We went through a couple of of, of versions of of trying to figure out. Uh, how to pull it off, but but wound up with what I think was maybe the simplest and and most effective. We 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 flew a drone down uh, the Vegas Strip, um, and then as it approached uh, Caesar's Casino, uh, there was uh, another drone operator hiding behind a car in the valet, and he sort of ran out when the camera couldn't see him and gently caught the drone and carried it into the casino, uh, following. Uh, our performer, but it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a great, a great shot and like a, just a, a wonderful team effort. So I'm, I'm so happy to, to see everyone on here who, who contribute to it. Um, I think like, you know, with, with Rob, I know we had massive limitations with the casino and he had to construct the stage set that the shot culminates on in, a, in about an hour. Um, and then uh, we started rolling on it around 1 a.m., Finally got a take that that we loved. Uh, I think around four a.m. Just beating the sunrise. Um, usually you're chasing the sun. This was sort of the opposite. And then um, we all celebrated. Coincidentally, the, the first shot of the season was the was the last shot that we did in production. So this wrapped up months, years for some people working on season three, and was just a wonderful way to send it off. I it's so wonderful. And and Robin talking about the production design on the series, I feel like every season they throw completely new challenges in terms of production design because there's so many new locations and spaces. Um, but I love the way that visually always ties back to the central characters. And in particular, no matter where Deborah Vance goes, it always feels like we're in her world, whether she's getting roasted, going to a golf course. Um, and so in looking at all of the different locations that you had that were new this season with the show moving around, how did you and your team make sure that it still always felt really connected with the details back to the characters and the story? Sure. A lot of that work comes out of um, working with a very specific palette. Adam and I talk a lot about palette when it comes to the world of Deborah Vance. And there's just a a tone that that Adam really ties together with us, too. A lot of the lighting puts us in that world. So that's really where it comes down to is the palette that we use. And then, you know, there are some repeated elements that we'd like to play around with things like the roast. We have a little bit of a nod to some of her earlier dressing rooms. There are a lot of that Vegas glam that we try to keep her in. Um, and then just to bring, to elevate her. It's so great. And Kathleen, in talking about the costumes, especially for Deborah, this series, I was really curious in how you mapped out the idea of the way that she is pitching herself for late night. And she's starting to, persona wise and looks wise dress and act according to the job that she wants in order to get it because I thought it was such a great arc to see the way that her style changes ever so slightly in line with that yeah I mean I think of Deborah Vance as super savvy and you know she's a woman who knows what she wants and she uh dresses for the part that she wants to have you know first season we met her she was in Vegas second season she was on the road we saw her in a lot of different environments season two where she sort of dressed for her audience and season three she's really going after late night and so she knows her audience and she she dresses accordingly and I just have to reiterate what a beautiful shot the opening was um it was, it was. so amazing and 
I talked with Adam about it too. I think it was really important that the the visual of the opening of episode one, season one, mimicked what Deborah wore, and so we were. It was very intentional to put her in that same, put the drag queen in that same outfit, and I just think it it was an amazing opening for the season, and I think it was an amazing shot. I agree wholeheartedly. And and Jennifer and coming over and talking about working with Jean Smart on her hairstyles throughout the series. Um, you know, we kind of, we met her at the beginning of season one and she was very much in the Vegas bubble and that has grown and evolved and changed so much over time. And so looking at season three, I was really interested in what were some of the new or different elements that went into some of the hairstyling for this season? Well, I feel like, I mean, that's been the really fun part of this show is, and it's kind of been organic in, you know, with Keith and I, like creating that um, arc, but it's been really important for us to keep that in, you know, we've had to, we've had, we've had some fights about it with people, but it's always worked out. And, and I'm so glad that people notice that because, um, I feel like, you know, her relationship with Ava has had a lot to do with her arc of coming more into the present and coming into more of a contemporary look. And also with Kathleen with the clothes and um and the makeup too. So I don't we're kind of in a in a phase right now where she's going into late night. And so we'll be able to do something great for that, um, you know, seeing what Kathleen's got for the clothes and um, the set and the whole thing. So it's been really fun and amazing to work with all of these people because every it's a really creative and, and um, everybody works together to create something amazing. And it's a lot of times on the fly, which is hard, but amazing sometimes. So Anyway, it's, um, yeah, it's, and the, the opening shot, Adam, was spectacular. I mean, really, I could, I was blown away. It's so effective. So, I mean, the, the drag queen was so effective as that, as the double for, for Deborah. It really was. I mean, something. unless you knew, I don't think you really knew, yeah. you know, until the very end, which was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And consider pretty loopy by the end of that day too. Pretty loopy, everyone. And the all it was an all nighter too. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really nervous about the the pacing of the shot. Like, would it could we hold the all? I remember one thing I remember that I love is I think the song had been picked out. Um, Evil Woman um, had been picked out in advance, and I remember watching at the monitor, and you know, with a shot that length, with this elaborate handoff, and all these background performers, everything needing to sync up perfect, you know, you'd get 75% of the way through it, and it would mess up, or you have to start back again, and get the drone back out over the strip. I remember Paul W. Downs playing the song on Spotify, and like, when we finally got it, like, everyone sort of bop into the rhythm and celebrating. It's so fun. Great. I, I love that. Um, Keith, in, in coming over to you as well and talking about working on Jean's makeup and all the different looks, you know, similar to what Jennifer was describing about Ava's influence and allowing her to feel a little bit more modern and connected to the present. How has that evolved the way that you have approached her makeup looks in the series, in particular season three? When we start out in season one, she's very much in that Vegas look, which is a heavy eye and the whole thing, like a stage makeup, basically. And now what we've moved through, everything that's going on with her, emotionally with Ava, it, by season three, the eyes are down. There's very few lashes, a little bit of color. So we're toning her down, except for when she has to be on stage. And it really helps because I've known Jean for over 20 years. So I know I can go to Paul and Jen Lucia and say, I'm not necessarily understanding what leads up to this. And they'll tell us. And for Jen and I, then we can plan the arc. Because you have to. Some days you're shooting this episode and this episode and this episode. It's like, how can you change really quick? And it helps that Jen and I have known each other for 20 years. And then we have the wonderful Kathleen who kind of sets the tone. We look at what she's doing and where she's going, and then we can collaborate together. So it's just, it's probably one of the best jobs that I've ever had in these years. Because it used to be when I first started in the business, it was much more of a collaboration. And when we got this job, it's very much like that. And it's very much like a, fa a family. 
uh, everybody gets along and I can go to Adam and say, I'm concerned about this and I'm not concerned about that. But he always, I don't even have to say anything. He always likes her where she looks beautiful. And that's nice that I don't have to worry about that aspect of it because sometimes you do because it affects what her hair looks like, what her costume looks like, what her makeup looks like. But it's also too, when you walk into a set like Deborah's house, which is so unbelievably beautiful. We know who this woman is. And I kind of see her makeup is, she's a very savvy woman, but for me, her clothing and her hair and her makeup is like a shield for her. That's a face that she puts in, it's a character. And when she goes home, it's her. And then she's looking at just herself. So I kind of see our collaboration as a shield. You know, uh, she's got to put on that strong look, but when she comes home, she could kind of come apart. And this, this season, when she's going to be going into the late night thing, it's going to be interesting to see where we're going to go with that. I can't wait to see it when it eventually comes out. Um, John, in, in talking about the the sound mixing on the series as well, I feel like, you know, similar to Rob's work with the production design, there's so many different intricacies to the different locations and spaces that the show carries you through when it comes to sound, because an episode where they're lost in the woods is going to be very different to a television studio for the roast to moments where we're in Deborah's house. And so what are some of the, the details that go into the work that you're doing, depending on all of these different spaces and locations that the show is carrying us through? Well, a lot of the sound world is is just doing the technical stuff to to make sure we stay out of the way, make sure um, uh, the great dialogue is is always up front. Um, you know, it's so fun to meet all you guys. Um, I mean, when I rolled my chair up, you know, after you guys basically had finished production, I think for for a while, because I think you had finished part of the season partially um before the strike and then after the strike he came back uh, by the time i saw anything i think production may have been wrapped except for a quick visit to vegas that you guys did for some for some pickups um but when i rolled my chair up for the first time to that to that opening scene it was it was fantastic um but listening to you guys talk about arcs um we don't you know as a mixer, we don't get so many of those arcs. The one arc that I would say that we do, we did get to have, and we've had across all three seasons a little bit is um, playing the sound of the audience um, for um, for Deborah's stand up, basically. So um, I know our producers, you know, are really part of the story that's being told is where is Deborah killing where she failing com uh, comedy wise and all of those little details about uh how well she's doing or not um we do um me and my team with the with the editors uh, sound editors um we we are able to contribute a little bit that way but going back to the opening scene um uh just a funny anecdote paul is always the one who's always driving the level of the music up. He always wants to feel that energy. Um, and the first pass that I did, Evil Woman was pretty loud, but he's like, louder, let's get it up there. Man. <laughs> so uh, even to like, I think it was one of the last things that we delivered after, after uh, delivering the entire, uh, oh, it must've been chronological. It was one of the last things we delivered. He came back in a like a fourth time just to raise the music a little bit more. <laughs> it's such a great detail about about that scene. And and Kathleen, in, in coming back over to you in terms of some of the costumes, um, obviously I know there's so much pre-planning and pre-production that goes into every single look and every single detail. But there's also those little touches that you find once you're on set with the actors as well. And one of the things that, that I think, you know, people really were attracted to this season was the golf course outfits that you had for Ava and Deborah. And, you know, having Hannah in the caddy shirt, but like turned back to front and the visor that you put on being two details that you came up with by the sounds of it in the moment, once you were on site, kind of feeling like she looked a little too pristine still for the scene. Um, and so I wanted 
wanted to ask about some of the moments this season where you really found details in the moment as you were kind of continuing to work on the looks that you'd already built. I mean, that was one for sure. Uh, Hannah, who plays Ava, walked on set and she just looked too chic in that outfit. So we turned her around, turned the caddy vest around. And that's one of the things that's so great about the show is that in the moment we turned her vest around and it made her look a little dorky. And then also then she, Hannah was able to use that. The writers used it. They were able to add dialogue that made sense. That was funny. So I think things that happen organically are super welcome on the show, which is also great. You know, it's just been, uh, it really is a collaborative place because I think, you know, Adam's, photography sets the tone of like the elegance of the show and the the mood of the show so we're always I feel like we're all the, the all the departments were really hard in painting the same picture like telling the same story so I think it's important to all of us that we we're all in the same world together and I think it's been um for me a really amazing creative collaboration with all the departments you know I, I work really close with Jen and uh Keith on you know uh, I always show them what Deborah's wearing so that they can plan their looks. And it just makes the whole uh, the whole visual cohesive. And then that works with the sets and it makes works with the photography and works with the story. So I think it's been like I think we all realize the. I don't know, I think I'm just really lucky to be in an environment where the departments are very willing to like work together. It feels very special. Absolutely. And like, not only is it like the the whole team so collaborative, but I think like the unspoken thing is that we have these fabulous scripts that yeah. like are really, <laughs> really the basis for like, yeah. we can all do wonderful work, but it gives us, there's just, there's just the scripts, the, 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 it's it, all, all of our work can be story driven, which I think is just, just really a wonderful thing. I mean, we've all, we've all worked on things where you had a great team, but the material wasn't all the way there. This is really like the, the full package. We have everything. We absolutely have everything. Yeah. And and Jen and Keith, in terms of, of talking about that collaboration as well, I was interested for both of you, you know, working so closely with Jean on all of her looks for the show, how you kind of go through all the scripts, figure out ideas for pieces and elements and work really closely with her. But then again, similar to Kathleen, you know, once you're on set and seeing how is something looking under this specific lighting or this adjustment was made, finding those changes as well, because again, it sounds like it's a mix of those two things coming together for you. Well, I mean, she every she wears wigs for the whole for every look. So you know, I have four wigs, and they're always in a state of getting ready. Um, the thing is, for me, like I, my, the highlight of our day is seeing what she's going to wear the next day, and so in that, then I get the wigs ready in the morning, and I just, you know, let the spirit th flow through me, the hair spirit, and come up with these looks. And thank God. They work because it's really hard to change once you're on set, the hair, the hairstyle itself. So it's worked out great. And, um, you know, um, I don't know. It just comes together sometimes. You're like, I don't know how this is going to happen. Like you read the script and she's taking the wig off in the scene. It's like, okay, um, <laughs> let's go for it, you know, and it works out. And, uh, you know, I'm always grateful. <laughs> and Keith and I, you know, we have these moments of like, I don't know how we're going to do this, but it works out. You it's know? great because we have, Jen and I have a, like a morning meeting. And after we read the scripts, we'll get together and say, I plan to do this, 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 because we're going to jump around with the shooting schedule. And Jen's like, well, we're going to change this wig here, but we're not going to change this. So it helps because once Kathleen sets the tone, we know where to go with it. And if we feel sometimes what's great about these guys is that sometimes we're like, can we push this a little bit further or have you thought, and they are always open. I never feel like they're placating me and just listening to the same. And they're like, okay, what's your reasoning behind that or whatever. And it's nice that you don't have to worry about going up to them directly and saying, I was thinking about doing so-and-so. Oh, that sounds even better. Do that. So that's interesting and it's helpful. But sometimes on set, we get in there and Adam's uh, sets are always beautifully lit. I never have to worry about the way Jean's going to look. And that is a huge, huge thing, especially for makeup and hair. And when we go in there, every once in a while, it's like, okay, 
shoot, the lips are a little too pink, or this is when you see the colors of the rooms and things. But it's nice because we've already kind of pre-planned it. I don't like to be, I don't like to be kind of on the line about what we're going to do. So Jen and I always meet. And Kathleen's crew, they always send us all the photos for the scenes. We can plan episodes, how we're going to jump, 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 jump. So it's a pretty well-oiled machine. It's an impressive think, anyway. <laughs> John, in, in coming back to something that you were touching upon before, you were talking a little bit about how obviously this last season filmed a little bit differently because of the pause in the middle for the strike. And I was I was curious about for the work that you did, if that changed the flow and the structure of how you were working on it, because there was a little bit filmed and then there was kind of a stoppage and then everybody coming back into it. Um, and I was interested in if things kind of stayed the same for your process or if that changed things at all. Um. I'm not sure, but the only way it, it may have changed is that our producers, um, Jen Paul and Lucia, um, may have been further along in picture editorial. So um, they may have had just a, a little bit more ability to focus just on the mix. A lot of times they're juggling. Um, I don't know how these schedules are going, but uh, on season one and two, like if they were I think they got through the writing first, started production, but they're cutting episodes, I think, and mixing sometimes when they're still shooting. Um, that didn't seem to be the case for this. So so um, uh, that may have you know, been a different in their focus. I'm not sure. But um, um, it was great. It was one of my first shows back after the strike, and it was fantastic i mean to be working again and to be working on the quality of this show and be in the third season where we develop great friendships and trust um it was it was really a fun season I always love hearing about the experience of working on this show because it always sounds so incredible. And 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 Rob, one of one of the aspects I wanted to ask you about as well with the production design was creating the whole look and feel for Deborah's house for Christmas because it shows the exuberance that she has for the holiday, but also at the same time, you can tell that she hasn't done any of the work or the decorating herself. She's paid other people to do it. So it feels like her, but also feels like work that was created by other people for her. And I was interested in how you struck that balance. Well, what the way we strike that balance is we have this um, incredible set decorator, Jen Lukart, who has an incredible assistant set decorator who is passionately in love with Christmas, Jill Carvalho. And so um, the fact that we've been able to be on the show for as many seasons as we have, we have that understanding of Deb Vance and the fact that Jill is such a lover of Christmas. Um, she's able to find a really that right balance of elegance with just the slightest bit of kind of comfortable traditional, but still keeping in the world of Deborah Vance. Uh, that, that mansion, the work that we did on that mansion was pretty incredible for Christmas. It, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun in retrospect. Um, as so many things are, uh, but yeah, that's, that's really where it comes from. It comes from a really terrific set decoration department Amazing. and understanding and Deborah and understanding that space, understanding where she comes from. Definitely. And, and Adam, in, in kind of coming back to the cinematography as well, I've heard you mention previously that one of the great things about the scripts on this show is that they actually do have a lot of visual details kind of as these little breadcrumbs to build a foundation for you in terms of figuring out what episodes are going to look like. And so I was very interested in what were some of those crucial details that they interlaced into the scripts for season three that really helped you to map it all out? Yeah, well, they, they're, they're, I mean, the scripts are... Uh, beautifully written from a story perspective and the dialogue is obviously like incredible but they're I think Jen Paul and Lucia are also just wonderful visual artists so I think that you know the opening one or the drone shots written written right into the script um and then you know I think I think for for me from a cinematography perspective um the exciting challenge has been finding a way to take the look that we developed way back in season one when most of the show existed in in the casino and on Deborah's extravagant uh, stage and in her mansion and taking that look and making it applicable to these new scenarios that that Jen Paul and Lucia are putting her in. So how do you how do you take that look and make it cohesive to a golf course or um, a frat party? You know, and I, I, it's been fun working together to, to figure out how to um, 
give it the same hacks quality and, and vibe ac across these environments. And I love the way that all of you talk about working with the three of them as showrunners. And it always sounds like from the way that people describe their work and, and collaborating with them is that they have a really clear idea and a really clear vision for the show and a lot of elements, but also they really trust the people that they bring into that collaboration. And so there's a lot of freedom in order to try things and, you know, to take risks. And if something, if we try something and it doesn't work, it's okay. We'll just adjust and do it a little bit differently. And so I just wanted to ask you all a little bit about your experience in terms of the way that they give you such specific ideas, but also that they give you the freedom to really create in your own fields as well. Yeah, I think that the fact that they are such strong uh, filmmakers, um, it makes it makes you feel, I think, as a collaborator, like you're free to pitch. Like you know, you, you know, you know that you can you can pitch something, and if it isn't the right thing, they're going to know right away. So it's almost sort of freeing. You can just be like purely creative, knowing you have these wonderful guard guardrails of these. Um, of these strong showrunners that are just so strong, you're never going to like push them over or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like they're going to, they know the right things. So you, you pitch your ideas and see if they work. That's one thing that I think we've all experienced is working on shows with showrunners that have notes that are just for the sake of giving notes, just for the sake of putting their stamp on things. Every note that I, that I've gotten from Jen Paul and Lucia, I would say pretty confidently, every note that I've gotten from them has made market improvement on what we were doing. Like it really does build the pyramid we have it's just really strong they're a very strong foundation for what we get to do i think about once, you? You know, once they trusted keith and i we they pretty much let us do whatever you know it, it's like always a surprise to see how it's going to be they're surprised sometimes too it's like well here she is <laughs> So that's great because it really does, you know, having that freedom to create is uh, that's, that's the, that's it, you know? And I is think that, together we have a great team. Yeah. Has that been something for you as well, Kathleen, with the costumes? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're very, um, they're very strong showrunners, and they have a very strong sense of the show and the world that we're all making. So they're very involved. And um, they see everything. I show them everything. There's never a surprise. Um, but an example of, you know, the opening shot, for example, very early on, I said to Lucia, I said, I think, you know, the drag queen needs to be in the same multicolored sequin coat that we saw Deborah and, and Lucia was like, oh, no, I think it needs to be something different. It needs to be like, you know, we just Deborah-esque. And so we think and I kept saying, like, I, I listened to her and I was like, OK. And then I went back a couple of days later. I'm like, you know, I really feel and I don't usually it, I think because I felt so strongly about it. She heard me and and um, and I think I actually enlisted Adam's help a little bit too <laughs> to like help me with my idea but I think it just worked for telling the story and I think ultimately they were very happy with the whole the whole situation but yeah I think they're they want the best show that they can have and I think we all try to make that happen for them it was such a great choice and and John even for you as well I was curious about your experience because even just what you were describing about Paul's kind of attention to detail of, of the sound mix and where the music level was at kind of shows how connected they are to every single detail of the show yeah yeah um I will say in in post in, in the mixes that we do um as as um clear about so many of their ideas that they are they do like to to leave a little bit of leeway for choices to the last second um specifically with um licensed music um not that wasn't the case with uh with evil woman like like you said adam i mean they had picked it out um at the script level but uh a lot of music um will have maybe 10 12 15 options for either score or licensed music um, because there is a little bit of um, just feeling it, um, letting the three of them with their slightly different tastes um, negotiate a little bit, um, which is always fun because uh, we do a lot of our mixing uh, remotely with them. Um, they um, 
when we started in COVID, um, we couldn't have people on the, on the mix stage. So um, we were doing a lot of the mixing um, with our remote systems where they listen on headphones and then they're on a zoom conference and, and, and give their notes and stuff. So um, it's always funny to see because Paul and, and uh, Lucia are always there together in their, in their home. And sometimes when they're negotiating about music or, or other choices, uh, they'll just go on mute and you'll see some very animated um, negotiating happening. And then they'll come back, <laughs> come back on and say, yeah, we're going to go with evil woman. <laughs> I, I really, really love the way that everybody talks about this work on the show, because all of the work that you've all done is so exceptional and so it's really lovely to hear how great of an experience it is to work on a show like this so i just want to say a huge congratulations for an amazing season can't wait to see the next one and thank you so much thank you mark thank, thank, you. thank you thank you very much